Hey, it's me. And if you listen to my last Instagram, you know that I was talking about vision, manifesting, and faith and how all three work together. You cannot have one without the other. But I wanted to, one, let you know that if you didn't hear the entire video from my last post, you can visit my YouTube channel and get the remaining probably another 30 minutes of vision, manifesting, and faith. But today, I wanted to talk to you about just a few things from my vision board from 2020 that have happened. And then there were some things that we're still working on. And I think a lot of times people talk about like the joyful things and the things that they accomplished. But what about those things that didn't fully come to fruition? What do you do with those things? And how do you keep moving forward? Because that's the most important thing. You may write a lot of things down or place a lot of things on your vision board, but I just want to encourage those that may be all of the things that you were hoping for at the beginning of 2020, especially when the world took a whole major shift. If those things didn't happen, today's a new day. 2021 is a new year. So I just want to talk about a few things that are in uh, my vision journal and how some of those things, they came to pass and some of them maybe started late in the year and some of them I'm still working on. The first thing I want to talk about is becoming a vegan. A lot of people have asked me about my journey, but let me tell you that my journey began in 2013. Yes, 2013 was the first notation that I can find in one of my journals about becoming a vegan. And I remember thinking, you know, I want to become a vegan. I don't know what uh, started me on that journey, but it was something that I found, like I said, in my journal from 2013. And obviously it didn't happen. And here I am seven years later. That's what I want to encourage somebody on. Seven years later, I am now a full vegan. From January 1st until today, I have not had meat. I have not had dairy. I have not looked back. So I just want to share a little bit of my journey with you on becoming a vegan, how it's been, how the transition has been, and just encourage someone. Maybe you're thinking about becoming a vegan and uh, you don't kind of know how to make it happen. So I'm just going to share my personal journey and maybe it will encourage you. So the first thing I did in becoming a vegan, like I said, 2013, I don't want you to forget that, 2013, I wrote it in a journal. When 2014 came, I never thought about it again. That's real talk. Sometimes you will write something down and there will be a date stamp on it for maybe years down the line. The most important thing that I will say in this journey in this journey of vision boarding, in this journey of writing things down, in this journey of setting goals, is Habakkuk 2 to Write the vision and make it plain. You may not run with it today. You may not run with it tomorrow. You may not run with it three years from now. But here I am, seven years later, running because I wrote it down. Writing is so powerful and writing with your hands is one of the most powerful things that you will ever do. So I wrote it down 2013, 2013, 2013, 2020. I'm a full fledged vegan. I have not looked back, but I was on a journey of self-discovery 
what I realized is that what worked for me, I sat down and I said, let me watch as many documentaries as I can get my hands on to understand becoming vegan. Let me back up. One of my goddaughters says this to me all the time. Technically, you're not a vegan because you still wear leather. You're right. I love my leather shoes. I have some leather coats. I have some leather clothes. And I'm not ready to give those up yet. And I'm okay with that. So technically, I'm plant-based. But I just want, you know, there's descriptions for, I mean, there's so many descriptions for so many different things. But anyway, so what I decided to do was I started watching uh, some documentaries because I wanted to educate myself. So literally the last week of December, I, and I'm going to, I have them listed here because I want to give them to you. I watched Cowspiracy, What the Health, Game Changers, Forks Over Knives, Hungry for Change, A Healthy Diet for a Healthy Change, and Plan Eat. Let me say those again. Cowspiracy, What the Health, Game Changers, Forks Over Knives, Hungry for Change, A Healthy Diet for a healthy change and plan eat. I also availed myself to many uh, YouTube channels to see what other people did in terms of how were they eating? What was their grocery list? How did they make the transition? How are they feeling now? What, what helped them? What helped them to continue the journey? So I watched all those documentaries and after I watched them, I was like, you are never going back to meat or fish. Now that's my story. But I'm telling you, once you begin to educate yourself, you will have a different view of meat in the meat industry. And I, th I think it'll change your mind. And so I started on the journey because I, I knew that in January as a church, we go on a fast. So I said to myself, educate yourself, watch all these documentaries, watch uh, some of the movies, watch these YouTube channels so that you can have an idea of what you're walking into. So I did all of those things. Um, you know, I watched some cooking channels um, in terms of cooking vegan. Uh, Tabitha Brown, I don't know if you know her, but she's on Instagram. She's on YouTube. I watched her. She does so many amazing recipes. She's so personable. I felt so connected to her. So I, I just did all of that. And, you know, I fasted so that I was now, you know, clean. And then I started on my journey. I'm I'm going to say the first couple of months, it was different. That's, I mean, I'll just use that word. It was different. It was different. However, I really began to feel so much better. Um, I didn't start this journey to lose weight. I didn't weigh myself. I didn't want it to be about weight. I wanted it to be about my health, feeling better, looking better, not not being bloated. Um, you know, I just mentally, I just wanted, I just wanted to feel clean inside out. So it also helped that my son is older, because you know, those of you that may have young children. You know, it's like, okay, if I'm vegan, what are my children eating if they're not used to salads and vegetables and those kind of things? So I'm I'm not saying this is for everyone, but I'm just letting you know my journey. I My husband decided that he was going to go vegan slash vegetarian. And my son tried it for a few weeks and he's, then he said he was a flexitarian. 
then my spiritual son who lives with us, he tried it for a few weeks and, um, you know, he went flexitarian as well. But I was fine with that because I was like, I'm cooking one meal. We're all grown in this house. I don't make separate meals for anyone. This is this is how we roll one. So when I cook something, if you want to eat it, taste it, you're more than welcome. But I'm not making two separate meals. So, um, you know, I was doing well. And then I just remember this one particular day. I kept saying, I just want some Americana food. I want, I wanted... I just want, I wanted some pizza. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? How? So I found vegan pepperoni. Of course, they have all kinds of vegan cheeses. Um, Whole Foods makes a really good dough. And I made a vegan pizza. And I, it was like the most amazing because I had gone, I think it was the month of April. I had gone four months without you know, I was just on that straight and narrow. But when I figured out I could make pizza, I was good. Because I was like, I don't eat pizza a lot. But like, you know, every now and then you just want a good slice of pizza. So, um, so that was like, that was a moment for me. I remember that moment. But I honestly, I, I watched YouTube channels and I would, I had a list that I kept in my phone so that when I would go to the grocery store, I would just have this running list and then I began to try different recipes. I, you know, um, learned like mushrooms can be like a really great meat substitute. Um, I was figuring out my own taste buds without meat being included in my diet. So it was, it just so, man, what a wild journey. So great. Um, I, I found that we you know, didn't waste as much food. Um, cooking was so much faster because I'm not waiting for meat. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm grilling, I'm stir frying, I'm, you know, eating raw. So my meals, my meal prep was real quick. Then I was able to find some really great vegan restaurants and restaurants that understood vegan and understood plant-based because I don't eat dairy. A lot of times people can get vegetarian and plant-based confused. So I had to figure out what, which restaurants, you know, understood that. And I have ventured and found some really, really great restaurants and some uh, people that cook really well. Um, you know, the other thing about being a vegan is like, we love flavor. We love taste. I mean, I'm Cape Verdean. I'm black. I'm a, I like flavor. And so, you know, experimenting with all different kinds of seasonings and it's just, it's been so, so great. And then, um, I found a, um, a subscription box that is completely plant-based vegan that I get, uh, three meals, uh, every Monday and shout out to Conchetta who told me about it. Um, and their food, I mean, it is so good. My husband, my son, my spiritual son, they are just like, oh, that is so delicious. So that has been something that was on my bucket list. Um, I had it in my vision journal. I'm gonna try to find the page now. Um, yeah, so this was, my in my vision journal I had some pictures of myself of you know the weight that I desire to be or size because like I said I still haven't weighed myself but what I will say is I you know people have been saying to me oh my gosh you lost so much weight and honestly because weight hasn't been my focus I haven't noticed it I mean I know that my clothes feel better but I, I still am not hyper-focused on weight. I am just focused on how do you feel? How do you feel on the inside? Um, what is your thinking like? I, I really had to tell myself, like, you have lost weight, so you can go down a size. Like, literally, I 
was like, you can't buy, like, you can't buy that because it's too big. Like, it needs to be smaller. So I had, um, in my vision journal, I had things like, um, one lesson I've learned is to make nutrition a priority. To keep my body active and my spirit lifted. This is my year to be the boss of my body. No artificial flavors, no added preservatives, equal loads of energy. It's a long stretch. This is for a lifetime. Love your body where it's at and love your body where you're going. So those were uh, some of the things that I had. And then I also had like my next thing on in my vision journal and um, on my vision board be moved, get in the zone, play it cool, it's your move, boost the energy level, be focused, unplug. My body is the ultimate expression of myself. I train and learn more about it, more about me daily, every day. This is a, it's a daily journey, um, you know, taking care of your body and taking care of yourself. So, I knew that becoming a vegan was plant-based was the first thing. And then, because I was like, you know, you want to take this slow. You have a lifetime. So I was like, okay, let's get the eating together, right? So that was my first thing. And then I introduced walking. So I spent that first six months just getting my eating together. And then I introduced walking. Um, because it was COVID, the you know, self-care things that I do in terms of massage. Um, I like to do float floating, which is uh, this right here. It's, you know, you float in it's like 10,000 pounds of Epsom salt. Uh, but if you have like high blood pressure or diabetes, you have to be careful and find out if you can do that. Um, but I would float uh, once a month before COVID. But during COVID, I wasn't really going out, so I wasn't floating and I wasn't getting a massage. Um, now the now I belong to Massage Envy. Now it's open back up again, so I can I started getting massages again. And just recently, our family has um, introduced um, the chiropractor. So. That was all, the chiropractor actually was on an, another year. I think that was two years ago. I had on my list to go to a chiropractor. See what I'm saying? Two years later, I'm finally at the chiropractor. We've we've gotten my um, uh, shoulders aligned. My back is fully aligned. Um, and it, it felt wonderful. I didn't know that because my spine was not fully aligned, it was affecting my lower bowels, even though I was regular. I know you're probably like, oh my God, she's telling all her business. But I was regular in terms of bowel movements. But once my spine was aligned, oh my gosh, I was going to the bathroom like I have never gone to the bathroom before, okay? So, and then that also made me look as if I lost way more weight because now that my spine was aligned, my shoulders were back, because, you know, and plus, if you're, you know, I'm a woman and I'm well endowed in the front, okay? So that was kind of weighing me down. And from working on the computer, the chiropractor said I was pushing my head forward like this. So then once he aligned me, my head was like back. And then these are the exercises that I have to do now. I have to do those exercises to keep my head back from working on the computer so much. So all of those things, you hear me? Being a vegan, 2013, going to the chiropractor, 2018, those things happened 2020. That is like the point of why I am talking about this today. Because sometimes we put stuff on our goal list, our bucket list, our vision board, and it may not, it may not happen that year. And that's what I talked about the other day is like, okay, you can have a vision and you can believe that it's going to manifest, but if you don't do the work, 
it is not going to happen. It's just not going to fall out of the sky. You have to do the work in order for everything that you put on your goals, on your vision board, you have to do the work to make it all happen. And it may not happen in the time that you think it'll happen, but if you keep working on it, that's that's why if you look further down in Habakkuk, it says, though it tarry, wait on it. I mean, though it tarry, I'm just typing something in because I, I want to um I, I want to give you uh a good definition to delay or be tardy in the act of doing. You see what I'm saying? To delay or be tardy in the act of doing. It can be delayed, but you have to be doing something to abide or to stay in place. That's what tarry means. Though it tarry, wait on it. And wait is a verb. Wait is an action word. Wait doesn't mean you're just like, that can't whistle. Wait doesn't mean that. Wait means, okay, what am I doing? I got to do, like, that's waiting. Waiting is movement, okay? So though it tarry, wait on it. Though I wrote it down in 2013, I can't say it enough. Though I wrote it down in 2018, can't say it enough. Here it is, 2020, all of those things. Synchronicity happen. Chiropractor, uh, vegan, working out, consistent. Beautiful, okay? So that was the first thing. So becoming a vegan, um, physical fitness, and self-care all on my list. And they all happened. And they happened in a systematic format. And honestly, the way the chiropractor happened was Pastor Matt ended up like his back was hurting. So he wanted, he was like, I need to go to the chiropractor. So he went to the chiropractor and he has such a great experience. He was like, oh, Maddie, you need to go. And then Maddie had such a great experience. They were both like, mom, you need to go. Um, so then I went and it was like, whoa, wow. I feel made new along with being a vegan, along with self-care. This is beautiful. So anyway, so that uh, is kind of the journey of me becoming a vegan, you know, learning new things, experimenting with food, experimenting uh, with seasonings and spices and experimenting with new restaurants and really just, just enjoying my journey. The second thing that was on my goals and on my list this year was, I want to say drum roll. I wish I had a drum roll. Not shopping for, for one whole year. Mm. I can't really say that happened. I did so well. <laughs> I knew, okay, so let me, yes, let me say this. I knew that I was not going to shop for a whole year, but I had two times during the year that I would shop. One was my birthday and one was Christmas. So what happened was, I got money for my birthday. I had some gift cards. I went shopping. I had money left over. And then that crept into August. Then it crept into September. Then it crept into October. Now, let me say this. I wasn't shopping as much as I used to. That's real. So I did feel toned down. But I didn't feel like I conquered what I set out to do this year. 
And I felt like me saying, I didn't do as much as I would have done. I felt like that was an excuse. And so I said to my husband, I need to try this again. And I'm not really sure if I want to shop on my birthday. And it's okay. So we're going to try it again in 2021 and we have to make it happen and that's real because sometimes you'll write things down and you'll conquer it and sometimes you may not and guess what it's okay because you just have to get back up and keep moving forward that's the point of this that's the point of this that's the point of this dialogue it's the point of this conversation is that if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, period. So I just want to encourage you to keep on keeping on, write it down, make it plain. And if it doesn't happen the way you think it will, keep going, keep going. trying to interrupt me. So that's my encouragement. I'm going to go through a few more things um, in my next video. And hopefully it is of help to you. And hopefully you're encouraged to know that it may not happen when you think it will, but it will if you keep moving forward keep moving forward do not give up though it tarry wait on it and i'm telling you take it from me seven years later i am a vegan two years later i have gone to the chiropractor and both of those things i feel amazing and i'm so glad that I wrote it down and that because I wrote it down, it happened. So listen, I don't know where you are today, but just take a moment to give yourself a hand for even just watching this and letting maybe a woman you don't know, maybe a woman you do know, just encourage you on your journey and let you know it's going to be all right. You're going to keep on keeping on. You're going to keep on writing your stuff down. And you're going to keep on dreaming. You're going to keep on hoping. You're going to keep hope alive. And you're going to keep living and live your life to the fullest. Do not leave this earth without doing everything that's on your heart to do. So I just want to say, be blessed. By the way, I'm in my vlog room. I love this room. It's so inspiring. It's inspiring me and um, I'm trying to be in here a little bit more every single day to just share the love. All right, blessing.